Hello and welcome to Life Questions, everybody. I'm Bill Harris, your host. We're grateful for another occasion to address fewer questions and concerns about life and provide biblical insights to brighten up your day. We've invited a cadre of local ministers to review your questions that have been mailed to us. They're here now to address those concerns, and I'd like to have you meet them at this time. First, we have Pastor Greg Fox of Rawson New Hope United Methodist and Bluffton Trinity United Methodist Churches, followed by Pastor Mark Bird, who is the state chairman of Revive Ohio. And then we have Pastor Bill Prater of Auglaise Free United Baptist Church in Maysville. And rounding up our panel, Pastor John Hayward, who is the associate pastor of Grace Community Church here in Lima. Gentlemen, happy to have you back. And I should say to our audience that uh, these gentlemen were our panel last week. And we want to pick up where we, where we left off, but just to kind of get the audience caught up to speed and what we were discussing, we were talking about the onslaught of homosexuality and its spread, the rapid spread of the acceptance of this lifestyle um, in our society that has always quoted itself as being one nation under God. Uh, now, we, we know what the Bible says about homosexuality. It seems that that movement has taken a political course to gain more acceptance. And through that, uh, through politics, it is gaining more momentum, PR and the like, uh, getting into schools to try to change thinking of our children and the like. And some parents are very concerned about that. Um, how, how do we deal with this? Because we know that in doing so, we're going to be called um, bigots and we're going to be called homophobic and things of that nature. But when we see what God's word has to say about how negative it is, we, we, we've got to do what we can to alert America to what, 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 what this entails and what the results will be if we embrace this, right? Mm -hmm. how, how would you say, Pastor? Bill, basically, I think it boils down to this. Uh, first of all, Jesus said that we will suffer persecution for his namesake, Matthew chapter five. He said, you will be called names, right? You will be. Uh, you know, I think it's interesting to say this, Bill, because uh, I've been a part of a lot of discussions about these kinds of things. And they say, well, your answer always is scripture. Like you always come back and your answer to everything is scripture. Well, there's a reason for that, mm -hmm. right? Because this word is alive. This is God's living word. And this is the, the, the manner uh, this is the owner's manual, yes. if you will, yeah. right? Yeah. So God is my owner. He's my, Jesus is my Lord. And he writes to us to be able to communicate his heart to us and to be able to teach us. And so to answer your question, Bill, I, I want to go and bring our attention to Matthew chapter 9, because again, here I go back to the word of God. And when you're talking about marriage between a man and a woman and how that starts to affect the families. And I think what ha is happening is Satan is trying to divert mm -hmm. and the younger and younger and younger school children are being introduced to these different concepts, right? Mm -hmm. Which are anti-biblical mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and they're anti-God, quite honestly, right? Because the Bible is God, right? And so what's happening is Jesus said, when the Pharisees came to him, this is Matthew chapter 19 and verse three, the Pharisees also came to Jesus, testing him and saying to him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? So they start off talking about marriage and divorce. But Jesus answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female. So right, again, going all the way back to Genesis 2, we talked about last week, but this is the beginning. This is the structure. This is the design, right? This is the owner's manual. And he said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together let not man not separate. So that's the basis of this bill, but to really delve into the question that you ask us today and what I see, because I've got five children myself, mm -hmm. like I remember not being taught really much um, different from this when I was in grade school, right? My older children were not taught much different than this really in, in school, but now I've got children all the way down into middle school mm -hmm. and now 
what's being taught today is as prevalent as anything that they're teaching today. So more and more, society is trying to dictate to our children what they are anti-biblical things mm -hmm. and they're anti-God things. Mm -hmm. But I will stand for what is real and what's true to me, right? And we will get called names and suffer mm -hmm. persecution, Bill, in that. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill, sometimes people say that uh, um, this isn't something new. It's been done since clear back in the Egyptian times. And, and Jesus tells us in Leviticus chapter 18, the, the very second verse, he spoke to the Israelites and said to them, I am the Lord your God. You must not do as they do in Egypt where you came from. It's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. That's the, the easiest answer for that question or that, that response mm -hmm. that you can have. Again, back to our owner's manual. And where was that again? It was Leviticus, Leviticus 18, verse 2 okay. and 3. And I think that brings up a good point that we're supposed to look different from the culture around us. And sometimes Christians can get so upset about the culture that we lose focus on the church. And Paul, interestingly, in 1 Corinthians 5, takes that head on. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 9 through 12, he says, I wrote in my letter not to associate with immoral people. I did not mean at all with immoral people of the world but with the covetous swindlers, with idolaters, for then you'd have to go out of the world. I actually wrote to not associate with any so-called brother who's an immoral person or covetous or idolater or a violer or a drunkard or a swindler. Don't eat, even eat with such one. What do I have with judging outsiders? Do not judge those who are outside. Do you not judge those who are within the church? And so I think as believers, we need to make sure we're strong at home in our church. And yes, we can speak to our culture, Absolutely, but that really shouldn't be our main focus. Our main focus to be, you know, to go back to that Leviticus passage, we should look different from the surrounding culture. Mm -hmm. and, and God also tells us that he did not send his son to die on the cross so that we could sin. He sent Jesus to die on the cross because we sin. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Pastor? God turned them over. It says, uh, First Corinthians, or Romans, I'm sorry, 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, yeah. who changed the truth of God. That's what the world wants. That's what the people are wanting today is changing the truth of God. Yes. They don't. Remember what Pilate asked Jesus? He said, what is what truth? Is truth? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right. So therefore... We need to get back to the, you guys talking about the, uh, I call it the road map. <laughs> yeah. We need to get back to the road map. But God will give people over. If you, want, if you don't want to obey God, you don't want to listen to Him, and that's what happened here, it says results of apostasy. Yeah. The church is full of apostasies today because preachers, like we're saying, are afraid to speak the truth of God's word. And therefore, they don't want to be called bigots. They don't want to be called homophobic. homophobic. They don't want to be called any of that stuff. But glory to God, we, the Bible says that, Brother Bill, we are a peculiar people. Yeah. We're set apart yeah. to do what God has called us to do. And that's what we need to do is listen yeah. to the Word of God. Amen. Well, a good point to think about too in that Romans 1 passage is it says they gave over, God gave them over yeah. to their degrading passions, right. but that's after they gave up worshiping God right. to worship something in creation. So the real problem yeah. isn't homosexuality or any other sin. The problem is what's happening in their heart. Who are they worshiping? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if any of you read Rosaria Butterfield. You know that name? Mm -hmm. She uh, was a lesbian uh, and a very outspoken feminist. She ended up having this um, years-long conversation with this pastor. She ends up becoming a Christian. She's now a very dynamic Christian. She's married to a pastor. She wrote a book called uh, something like The, the uh, Thoughts of an Unlikely Convert. Oh, wow. And she makes a great point there. She says, don't presume to think that the worst sins of your gay and lesbian neighbors is their sexuality. That's not their worst sin. Their worst sin, their root sin, is their unbelief. Mm -hmm. And isn't that, isn't that really the problem that we all have? Yes, it is. Right. So it has all sorts of different fruit expressions, right. and homosexuality is just one of those. And so what we need to be taking to the world is this gospel of Christ, that, yes. yeah, God is the one to worship, and their sexuality will get sorted out if yeah. they get that part right.
Well, the rejection of Christ can, can take you down so many dark avenues. Right. That, that, that's the thing. Yep. I mean, yep. The fact, and we were talking uh, during break at one point about the laws that are changing that are allowing for um, uh, marijuana. Yes. In, in this in this country, state by state by state, they're seeing that there's another source of revenue to be had by taxing that, of course, and so they're embracing it in society. I remember as a young television news reporter doing stories on this and when studies were be, being done on the fact that marijuana has over 400 chemicals, hmm. most of which we don't know that much about. Right. THC we know an awful lot about, but we don't know the long-term mm -hmm. effects of it. And yet it's being embraced by society as, as being okay. Right. And yeah. um, this is getting away from what God wants. And I guess the mere fact that we say that, well, uh, it's a root out of the ground, so God must want it to have it. But yeah. there, there are a lot of things that grew out of the ground right. after the curse yeah, thistles, of the earth. Thistles do yeah. too, yeah. Yeah. Right? right? You yeah. don't eat them. No, but no. You said, brother, it's the fact of it is God cursed the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. The ground is cursed. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. praise God, Jesus died on the cross so that we could not be cursed. That's right. He became a curse for us. He became sin for us. And he arose from the grave so that we could have eternal life. Amen. And glory to God, it's exciting to be a Christian today, no matter what goes around in this world, the society. We don't have to bend or bow to it because we are, we know who we are, mm -hmm. who we are in Christ. And that's going to, that, that's going to have to take some thought because when you say who we are, knowing who we are, right. that's what will, what will alleviate the fear and hesitation, won't it? Right. You know? That's, that's part of the anxiety that we talked about yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. We know that we know mm -hmm. that we are children of God right. because we are in Christ Jesus. And we that are in Christ Jesus have eternal life Amen. because He is eternal life. And every day that He's seated at the right hand of the Father, He is making intercession for His children. Right. And we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ today. And we need to be excited about it. Amen. Even though they got the pot smokers and they got the fentanyl people and these people are dying, coming over the, the border. I don't, maybe I shouldn't get into that, but they're coming <laughs> over the border. And our, and our president is going to, what is it, Title 42, going to, that he's going to try to eliminate that. Nobody will be checked. It'll all be free, free for all. And all the drugs that these people are bringing in will get in. They've already confiscated tons of it. But for, gosh, guys, we are needing to proclaim the good news. And that's what this Bible is, is the good news. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll end it there because we've got to take a break and come back and we'll, we'll switch course and go in another direction. When we come back, stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, thank you for staying with us, and we're back. And uh, listen, we want to get to something, another, another viewer question that is just straightforward and right to the point, gentlemen. Why is it so important to read the Word of God regularly? Who wants to go I like first? that regularly, uh -huh, too, right? Uh -huh. That's a great part of the question. So uh -huh. I think that's a really key to it, right, is to do it regularly. And, and I want to take us to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and Paul's instructing young Timothy, young pastor, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable yes. for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I think for me personally, that's why I need to read it. I think the other key point that I'd like to make here today, Bill, is that the Word of God is just not letters written on a page. Right. Honestly, it's alive. You yeah, know, Hebrews 4.12 said that yeah. His Word is alive, right? Yeah. It's sharper yeah. than any two-edged mm -hmm. sword. It's a living Word. And of mm -hmm. course, John 1.1 1, 1 says the Word of God 
is God, right? Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. him. So mm -hmm. the reason that I do it personally is because I need to do it regularly because I need to renew my mind. We talked about last week about the, the, the battlefields in the mind. Mm -hmm. And so what I have to do is to get this truth in my mind, mm -hmm. my mind wrapped around this truth, if you will. And if I don't do it regularly, it will fade from my life. Mm -hmm. I agree with all that, and I would, I would add, um, the Bible is our spiritual food. We eat regularly, <laughs> regular food, so we, we need to eat God's Word. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 says, putting aside all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander, like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the Word that you might grow in respect to salvation. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to grow in the faith, it's, we've got to eat God's Word. Mm -hmm. uh, another thought I had was, the Bible is what is our access to God. How, how do we get to know God? Through what he tells us about himself in his word. Jesus says in John chapter 5 verse 39, you search the scriptures because you think in them there's eternal life, but these testify about me. Mm -hmm. That's right. So if I want to know God, I open up his word and say, Lord, speak to me. Uh, an acrostic I'll use, and I, I've helped other people with a, a speak acrostic. S, is there a sin I'm supposed to avoid? Mm -hmm. P, is there a promise I can hold on to? Mm -hmm. E, is there an explanation to understand? A, is there an attitude or action I should adopt? And K, is there knowledge about God that should delight my heart? Mm. So I'm saying, Lord, speak to me. And I'm kind of thinking through those categories. And God is faithful. He speaks yes. through his word. It, goes, it tells us in Jeremiah, mm. um, in, in chapter 31, uh, between 33 and 34, it says, I will put my law in their minds and I will write on their hearts and I will be their God. That's right. Mm. Is that not where we find it? Mm. Yeah. Is in our scriptures? Yeah. Yes, yes. You don't just grab them out of the air. Right. Now God will put things on your heart, but how do you understand until you dwell in the word and find out what he's truly trying to tell you? Well, for some, it's a bunch of words and, mm. and, and ancient words of that. Yeah. And what some people perceive it to be is out of touch with the realities of today. Mm. How, how do you overcome that, 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 that premise, that notion? that there were just words written by men in another culture at another time. And here we are in the 21st century and they just don't ring with relevancy, well, so they I, say. I think the, the passage Mark went to before it in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, all scriptures breathed out by God. Yes. So it's, it's God breathed. That's what it testifies about itself. But I think we should tell people, yeah, it's, it's a hard book because yes. it was written 2000 years ago. Right on. And it was written in different cultures and different languages. And so there is some work to do. To, we can't just rip the verse out of the Bible and apply it directly to ourselves. We have to ask, what did it mean to the original author? What was he trying to say to his original audience? And then we apply it. So it, it's not an easy book. And when we tell people, oh, just read the Bible, we need to help them. Uh, I remember the first couple of times I was reading the Bible, I thought, I can't even find my way around this thing. I don't need to. Uh, so I'll tell you, though, if it, you take and this isn't a ploy for Revival Hile, but one thing to do that we do in Revival Hile is these armbands we hand out. The new ones are really awesome because it gives you the scripture as you're, as you're offer, you know, presenting the, the, go, the gospel to new Christians. But if you flip them inside out, it goes to the Old Testament and it shows you scripture where it has been prophesied that this will happen. And then when you find it in the New Testament where it actually did happen. And I found that with quite a few people in my church, for them to become more interested in um, reading the Bible and learning more is being able to find it in the Old Testament where it's been talked about and then find it in the New Testament where it's come truth. And yep. I've handed a lot of them armbands out to get them started. Um, it is an awesome way to show them that, you know, the first half of the Bible, people are talking about what is to come. Mm -hmm. The New Testament tells us what has come mm -hmm. and it kind of ties them together. Yep. Yep. It tells the story. Another, uh, another passage uh, in, in Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, again, this is Paul to Timothy, and he says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. What he says to do that, a workman, a workman, worker who does not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, how do you do that unless you're in here regularly, right? Mm -hmm. And like Pastor John said, I, I'm in the same boat. Like when I first started getting into this thing and first started reading it, Man, if I would have stopped right there, mm -hmm. my life would have looked way different mm -hmm. But because I kept applying this every day, I kept getting in. And again, it goes back to the word being alive. And, and what Pastor John talked about also is the Holy Spirit 
is working with this word Amen. to bring it Amen. to life. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is making it relevant to us in our lives today. Amen. So, so the same as God is still alive, right? Jesus is still alive. God, the father is still alive. And the Holy Spirit is still alive now working with us Amen. in this present day to teach us these principles Amen. that are in the word, right? Not just words on the page, but to bring it to life into our lives to affect us. Yeah. Okay. I'm just elated that God's Word is alive. Amen. And to know that I know that it's life. It's like somebody said something about eating. Leave for her. Mother did. We have a diet. A lot of us don't eat properly. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why we get ourselves in trouble. Mm -hmm. I like sweets. But it's nothing compared to the Word of God. Because mm. that Word of God, you know, we pick and choose a lot of times. What, like somebody pick and choose what we want. Well, when we go to Smorgasbord, we get ourselves in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we go over here to, right. uh, what's his place? Uh, uh, here Golden in town. Corral. Golden Corral. Yeah, they got that buffet. <laughs> and we want to get our money's worth. <laughs> But well, we need to get back into the Word of God where it truly gives us all that we need. Mm. All that we need is right here. Mm -hmm. I don't have to choose and pick what I want. I choose to listen to what thus saith the Word of God. Yep. And the Spirit of God, Pastor Bill and I was talking, we were brought up a little different, some of you folks. We were brought up in the Pentecostal movement. And I found myself, you brought up the Spirit, so here we go. <laughs> when the Spirit of God comes into you and you truly let Him take over, your life will change. Mm -hmm. yes. It'll never ever be the same. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for His Word that I can read it. He wakes me up. I read it every morning. Maybe He gets me up at 1 o'clock in the morning. Maybe 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But it's, I feel like it's just me and Him. Mm -hmm. It's just me and God alone. Nobody to bother me. Just us two having the conversation that we need. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's all wonderful. And I look forward to it. All right, now let's, let's turn to another topic. There's another question from a viewer. Is it okay for me to hang out with friends at a bar? Okay, very simple question. Very short letter. Is it okay for me to hang out with friends at a bar? I'll take that one. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'll just take that one just for, for example, okay? So uh, this is a real life example. So I led a men's group uh, from our church. Uh, some men approached me and they said, hey, can we start a men's group, men's Bible study, if you will? And I said, sure, where do you wanna, where do you wanna meet? You know? And they said, you know, we like to eat wings. This is what my men's group said to me. We mm -hmm. like to eat wings. Can we eat some wings together and get into the word together? And I said, sure, where do you wanna do it? right? At a, at a local wing place, right? Who what? Also served alcohol, mm -hmm. right? I want to tell you that men's group went on for over two years. One of the men in our Bible study group, his wife was the manager of that establishment. She said, the servers fight over serving you guys. We didn't ever, we never bought alcohol, but because we treated them right, right? right? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We let our lights shine before right. men. And you know what? Everybody knew when we came in, they're like, where do you guys want to sit? <laughs> we did this every week for two weeks. So is it okay to hang out with friends in a bar? It is, but know this, right? Uh -huh. So we held each other accountable, Yeah. right? But what happens is um, God told um, the Israelites, don't go down and hang out with the Amalekites because, right, you will end up worshiping and serving their gods. 
So I want to say it's okay in the context of this fellowship to stay accountable and all that. And yet we were letting our light shine before men. We were, right? Mm -hmm. And we were known as the wings in the word group. That's what we were known <laughs> as, right? So it, I don't want to be so pharisaical and so religious to say, oh, I can't walk into that establishment because you know what ended up happening? Um, cooks in the kitchen asked if they could take break when we were in there so that they could come in and sit in at our Bible study. Hmm. They knew exactly what we were doing. Well, it was the restaurant and, and uh, the, the bar. I yes. mean, it was not a, it was just a, a sole bar. Absolutely right. Uh, bar. Yes, sir. I yep. see what you're saying. But yeah. I will say, Bill, that if... And that text is wonderful. But where did Jesus hang out? He was well, with the unwanted, yeah. right? Yeah. He was with the outcasts, the murderers. Mm -hmm. And I come from that background. I had a trouble with alcohol for a long time before I become a pastor. And making that switch, I still am not afraid to walk into the local watering hole, sit down with my friends of that era, talk with them, share with them. But someone told me one thing quite some time ago and I was struggling with whether or not to be able to do that. As long as you go in there, shine your light and don't cause your fellow man to stumble, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. the motive. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You had a motive to glorify God. You had a motive to, stu to study the Word of God and that kind of thing. It wasn't a motive to, to uh, compromise mm -hmm. and begin to drink and make uh, excuses for that. Amen. So I, I, uh, I just, I, I thought of Matthew eleven nineteen. Well, we got about a minute left. Okay. Show, well, right so here. the son of man came eating and drinking. They said, behold, a gluttonous man and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. So that's Jesus talking about how people were talking about him. So I think Jesus probably hung out at the local bar. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's why you get called a, a gluttonous man and a drunkard. That's so, good. Well, but of course he wasn't, he wasn't abusing I, alcohol. Exactly. But he was, he was there with his with people to talk to. Yeah. Well, Go ahead, brother. Oh, well, got 30, can you say it in less than 30 seconds? <laughs> nope, not me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, thank you very much. This has been great discussion, and, and hopefully we have helped somebody. And I would encourage you viewers to write us, in addition with your questions, also let us know how well these gentlemen did and if, in fact, it, it reached and touched your life where, where you needed it. We'd love to hear from you on all of that. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. We're happy you could be with us today. We will be back again next week at this same time. So for these gentlemen here, I'm Bill Harris. We wish to thank you for being with us today. Bye-bye until next week. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.